Hi, this is Kate from the Seth House, and this is the first in the PDF of Seth exercises. And this one's topic is changing the past in your mind. And this one is just a little different. It's the first one, but um, they reference two different books. So Seth Speaks, session 566. And also we're gonna make reference to the individual and the nature of mass events. And the date for that session was July 30th, 1977. So I would like for you to settle into your seat, your chair, your couch, wherever you are, and close your eyes. This helps to turn off the physical senses so we can move into and feel our inner senses. Now let's use the three to one count to go deep into alpha. We will inhale deeply. And on the exhale, I want you to use your imagination and see the number clearly and say the number silently to yourself three times, getting softer each time, like three, three, three. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that together. Inhale and exhale. And again. And one more time. Now, our inner senses are awake, alive. I would like you to use your imagination and drop down into your heart space. And if you have trouble with this, just put your hand to your heart and feel the love that shines within you at the center of your chest. Feel the strong sensation of love that is within each of you. Now I would like you to imagine a door, a beautifully crafted door that opens out. On the other side of this door is a moving walkway that will take you wherever you wish to go. I would like you to take just a moment to visualize this door and make it very real in your mind. When this is very real in your mind, reach out and turn the doorknob and the door opens easily. You step outside and you find the sky is clear and the air is warm with a soft breeze. There are trees all along the walkway, and there is a sweet fragrance from the blossoms. The walkway travels to the right and the left. The right goes to the future, and the left goes to the past. Your intention is to travel on the walkway, and for this exercise, you want to go to the left. It is moving at a steady pace not too fast and not too slow. It is almost time to get on the walkway. Now, together, let's set our intention to arrive at 458 West Water Street, Elmira, New York, on February 15th, 1971, around 9.45 p.m. Seth has just given Jane and Rob a break. You will not interrupt the session, and Seth expects you. Now, when you have it in your mind clearly to arrive at Seth's house during the time he is dictating session 566, right after the break, you can step on the walkway going left, as this is the one that leads you into the past. The walkway is moving and carrying you with it. And it is taking you past hills and mountains, cities, lakes, and oceans. You notice all the beautiful scenery as you move past. Now listen, hear the sounds, the sounds of the cities of the ocean, 
the sounds of the forests, the sounds of the rivers. Now smell all the fragrances from the big city smells of food cooking, buses, trains, and cars moving by, to the salty air near the oceans, to the smells of animals on the farms, to the sweet smells of wildflowers in the meadows. The walkway is still traveling, moving along, carrying you with it. But now suddenly you sense that the scenes are from an older time, a slower time. And you realize you are moving back, back in time as you move through the scenery. Finally, the walkway starts to slow down and you realize it is in front of 458 West Water Street, the Seth House. You get off the walkway and you walk up to the house. Open the heavy front door, then the second door. You walk down the hall to the staircase and start to climb up to the second floor. At the landing, you notice there are colorful pillows for you to rest on if you need to. Now up the next set of stairs to the second floor, you turn to your left and see the door halfway down the hall is open and you hear voices. It is Jane and Rob getting ready to start up again, session 566, right after their break. They invite you to sit and listen. Sit and get comfortable and listen to Seth's words on changing the past in your mind. One event can be actualized by more than one probable self, however, and you will resemble some probable selves more than others because you are involved in an intricate psychological gestalt such as this. And because the connections mentioned earlier do exist, you can avail yourself to some extent of abilities and knowledge possessed by these other probable portions of your personality. The connections make for quite constant bleed throughs. Once you are aware of the probable system, however, you will also learn to become alert to what I will here call the nine intrusive impulses. Such impulses would seem to be disconnected from your own current interests or activities. Intrusive in that they come quickly into consciousness with a great sense of strangeness as they are not your own. These can often offer clues of various kinds. You may know absolutely nothing about music, for example, and one afternoon, while in the middle of some mundane activity, be struck by a sudden impulse to buy a violin. Such an impulse could be an indication that another probable portion of your identity is gifted with that instrument. I am not telling you to run off and buy one, but you could, however, act on the impulse as far as it is reasonably possible, renting a violin, simply acquainting yourself with violin concerto, etc. You would learn the instrument far quicker, you see if the impulse was originating with a probable self. It goes without saying then that probable selves exist in your future as well as your past. It is very poor policy to dwell negatively on unpleasant aspects of the past that you know, because some portions of the probable self may still be involved in that past. The concentration can allow greater bleed through and adverse identification because that part will be one background that you have in common with any probable selves who sprang from that particular source. To dwell upon the possibility of illness or disaster is equally poor policy for you to set up negative webs of probabilities that need not occur. You can theoretically alter your own past as you have known it, 
for time is no more something divorced from you than probabilities are. The past existed in multitudinous ways. You only experienced one probable past. By changing this past in your mind now, in your present, you can change not only its nature, but its effect, and not only upon yourself, but upon others. Pretend a particular event happened that greatly disturbed you in your mind. Imagine it not simply wiped out, but replaced by another event of more beneficial nature. Now, this must be done with great vividness and emotional validity and many times. It is not a self-deception. The event that you choose will automatically be a probable event, which did in fact happen, though it is not the event you chose to perceive in your given probable past. Telepathically, if the process is done correctly, your idea will also affect any people who are connected with the original event, though they can choose to reject as well as accept your version. This is not a book on techniques, so I will not go into this particular method deeply, but merely mention it here. Remember, however, that in a most legitimate way, many events that are not physically perceived or experienced are as valid as those that are and are as real within your own invisible psychological environment. There are in your terms then unlimited probable future events for which you are now setting groundwork. The nature of the thoughts and feelings you originate and those that you habitually or character characteristically receive set a pattern so you will choose from those probable futures, those events that will physically become your experience. Because there are bleed throughs and interconnections, it is possible for you to tune into a future event, say of an unfortunate nature, an event for which you are headed if you continue on your present course. A dream about it, for instance, may so frighten you that you avoid the event and do not experience it. If so, such a dream is a message from a probable self who did experience the event. So, so can a child then in a dream receive such communications from a probable future self of such a nature that its life is completely changed? The entire identity is being now. All divisions are merely illusions. So one probable self can hold out a helping hand to another. And through these inner communications, the various probable selves in your terms begin to understand the nature of their identity. Now, Seth is moving us through time to July 30th, 1977 at 1044. And you will now find yourself at the Hill House, as Seth has more to add about this exercise in the individual and the nature of mass events. And Seth now continues. Now, in certain terms, the past, present, and future are all compressed in any given moment of your experience. Any such moment is therefore a gateway into all of your existence. The events that you recognize as happening now are simply specific and objective, but the most minute element in any given moment's experience is also symbolic of other events and other times. Each moment is then like a mosaic. Only in your current life history you follow but one color or pattern and ignore the others. As I have mentioned, you can indeed change the present to some extent by purposefully altering a memory event. That kind of synthesis can be used in many instances with many people. Such an exercise is not some theoretical, esoteric, impractical method, but a very precise, volatile, and dynamic way of helping the present self 
by calming the fears of a past self. That past self is not hypothetical either, but still exists, capable of being reached and of changing its reactions. You do not need a time machine to alter the past or the future. Such a technique is highly valuable. Not only are memories not dead, they are themselves ever changing. Many alter themselves almost completely without your notice. In his apprentice novels, Rupert did two or three versions of an episode with a priest he had known in his youth. Each version at the time he wrote it represented his honest memory of the event. The bare facts were more or less the same. Entire meaning and interpretation of each version differed so drastically that those differences far outweighed the similarities. Because the episode was used on two or three different occasions, Rupert could see how this memory changed. In most cases, however, people are not aware that memory changes in such a fashion or that the events they think they recall are so different. The point is that past events grow. They are not finished. With that in mind, you can see that future lives are very difficult to explain from within your framework. A completed life in your terms is no more completed or done than any event. There is simply a cutoff point in your focus from your framework, but it is as artificial as basically perspective is applied to painting. It is not that the inner self is not aware of all this, but that it has already chosen a framework or a given frame of existence that emphasizes certain kinds of experience over others. Now, with your eyes still closed, Seth helps us to travel back in time to the Seth house to complete this exercise. Now, after hearing what Seth said, think about a memory that you have from your past that you would like a different outcome. Imagine this memory in as much detail and as vividly as you can Use all of your senses. What can you see? What are the colors? Are there any smells? Can you touch your surroundings? What do they feel like? Fabric, stone, metal, cool grass, leaves, water. What does your surroundings feel like? Now, how do you feel? What do you sense? Experience all these from your memory in great detail. Now I would like you to walk through the scene again, using all your senses with just as much detail, but this time change the ending to a more suitable ending that you would like. Believe this is the correct memory with a better outcome, the ending you would like. Now we will take a few minutes to experience changing the past in your mind.
Now that you have experienced Seth's exercise, it is time to come back to the present time. You thank Seth, Jane, and Rob for the wonderful exercise and you leave the apartment totally refreshed, remembering all you experienced. You are feeling wonderful in every way. Say to yourself, every day, in every way, I am getting better and better. Now you are exiting the building, feeling wonderful, and you now take the walkway to the right. You see all the wonderful sights and sounds as you did earlier. It is evening and there are many lights flickering in all the homes as you pass them by. Time is now moving forward, carrying you to the present moment of time. You arrive at your door, open it, and find yourself back in your heart space, full of love and new knowledge that you received from Seth. Now on the count of three, you will be fully awake and alert. One, you are beginning to emerge, feeling totally relaxed. Two, your mind is clear and alert. Take a deep breath in and out. Wiggle your fingers and toes and stretch. Your eyes are starting to open. And three, eyes wide open, fully awake and feeling fine. And I want to thank you for allowing me to bring this journey to you. And again, this is Kate from the Seth House. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.